In this video we're looking at templates and textures and in particular adding extra light leak textures to your templates. If you want a copy of the ones that I use in the video, the download link will be below. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So here we are in Luminar AI and this is the interface which you've probably seen in other videos and I am working in a PC and I'll put all the spec of the PC in the description below just in case anyone is wondering what I'm running this on. If you need to see what anything is in Luminar, go into the title here and you've got File, Edit, Image, View, Account, Window and Help. And as you will notice here, it includes the shortcut keys just in case you prefer to work with shortcut keys. And what I'm going to do for this video is try and keep it relatively short just to show you how everything works because the next few videos are going to go into more detail with Luminar AI. So most of the images here except for this one that's on screen just now are taken from Unsplash. This is one of my own images from a few years back. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how quickly templates can affect your images and how they can change the mood and feel of your images. As you can see over here, this is the recommended template. It's based on what the image actually is. And for this one, I am going to use experimental. But down below, you can see all the rest of the templates that are there and that are available. And you can also get more templates from the Luminar website. What I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to use experimental and I can cycle through these, I can take celebrate and you see how that changes the image, cold frame, colour ramp, glow and feather light. For me I'm going to use the last one that I didn't choose which was burned film and I'm going to use that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to base this edit around the burned film template. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into edit and it's just a very, very simple technique to start with with this. I'm going to go up to local masking and I'm going to go to add. I'm going to add a texture to this and the texture I am going to add is one of the freebies that's down below. There's 10 textures in total for you to use with your images and you can see what these are based around if you look at the images down here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how they can affect just normal studio images as well. But you can see already how this has changed the look and feel of this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another texture to this on top of this. And if I go into load texture, you can see the textures here that will be available for download below in the description. And I am just going to choose this one here, AI2. Click open. So what that's done is that's dropped another texture on top of the template that was there with all its adjustments. So if I go into advanced settings, I would recommend using screen blending mode for all of these textures. Go into screen, straight away you can see the difference and we also have the option of pushing the opacity to give you that effect bringing it back that effect as well and we can then adjust the brightness of them contrast of them as well and i'll just reset them by clicking the dot in the center i can change the saturation of them reset that and i can also change the hue of them to what I think would suit the image better. But for this one, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm also going to adjust the opacity for this just ever so slightly. So there we go. I'll just take it to that effect. And now what I'll do is I'll go into another edit up here. And just to show you the before and after, I'm going to press the semicolon key. Or you can go up to before and after here. And that lets you see the before and after. So you can see how quickly that has changed the mood and feel of that image. Just press that again. And that's it back. I'm going to leave that one at that. I'm just going to show you in a couple more images how you can adjust things. So for example, let's take this image here. And I'll go straight into my templates. And we'll see what templates it recommends for me. So it's already saying big city vibes. That is probably because of the lighting of the neon lights here. We've got Influencer. So I'm just going to go into Influencer and look to see what happens. Evening Glow, I actually really like that one. So I'm going to leave that at that. 
Then I'm going to get into the edit side of things and I am going to again, just because this is based around the textures that we can load in, I'm going to click add into texture and I'm going to load a texture. Haven't tried these before so I'll just load a couple in just to see how they look. Let's go for that one there. That one's actually worked okay, but again we have to go into the advanced settings, change the blending mode to screen, and you can just see that texture poking in there and no more. I can adjust the opacity of it and bring it up so that we can see the difference. You may prefer the before, you may prefer the, the after image. What we can also do is we can flip it horizontal and vertical, like so, and take it back to where it originally was. For this one, I'm going to leave that at that. I'll jump into another image for this. Okay, the final example using the textures. This one here, I am going to jump straight into Electric City and you can see how much that's changed the image already. So same process as before. I'm not going to get into any of the edits. I'm going to leave them as is for now. Go in here into the local masking, click Add, Add a Texture. Let's choose a text, one we haven't used. Let's go for that one. So we now have this texture in. We will go in to advanced settings, go into screen. You can see the difference again that that's made. I'm not so sure that one works with it, but let's just see how it goes. So we can take it off to there. It is working slightly better there. Let's zoom it in slightly. Just to take it to there. And I'm actually watching these lines here around the text as well from the neon sign. We can also change the hue saturation of it just to see what it does to the image. So let's leave it at that. And I'll go back up here into my essentials panel and show you the before, which is this and the after. Very, very quick to do in this style and very simple to do as well. So you can see where Skylum and Luminar AI is headed with these. It saves so much time when you're editing, depending on the types of images you're going to do. From here, we can go back in if we wish and add another texture. And we can go in load, load texture. Let's go for that one, just for the sake of it. So we've now got this one added as well and that helps to complement some of the colours that are already there. Again, Normal, screen, very, very bright. You can see how much that's lightened up the image by adding a second texture layer in the local masking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken it down slightly and I'm doing that via the opacity. The more I increase the opacity, the less of the screen effect will take place. So I can bring that back with a slight contrast to it. If I wanted to take it further than that, I could go in and do a basic edit. So you can see these are building up. And then I could pull the exposure back slightly, push the contrast even more, lift the highlights, lift the shadows. You can see more of this chap's face. And then I could pull the vibrance back if I wished. Add a tiny bit of structure to that as well. So you can see where Skylum and Luminar AI are heading with this new software. They're trying to make everything quick and easily manageable for any editor whatsoever. Hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully it lets you see very quickly how using templates and textures you can pull different things into your images. Luminar AI is aimed at that. It's aimed at creating images quickly, creating content quickly. I can see many people using this and I can see people that possibly don't have the time to learn editing to use this to create the images that they want to see very, very quickly. So it's very handy for that as well. It's one of the things I will be using it and it works as a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop and I will be using the AI elements within it. For future videos, I will be using it as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom so that you can see the workflow that's involved there as well. And it's very similar from the point of view of Luminar 4.3 where you can open Luminar AI in Lightroom and Photoshop, edit from there and take it back into those respective programs. The light leaks that you used in this video, 
I'll include another 10 in future videos and so that I can build up a library and so that you can build up a library as well because I'll make sure there's a download link. The next video will have them, the video after that will have them as well and I'll just be creating different textures so that you can download and use these in any of your programs. So feel free to help yourself to them. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and thanks for sticking with me over the last couple of weeks because I know it has been quiet in the channel, it's just due to other workloads uh, that I had to complete before Christmas. So they're done now and I can focus back on the channel. So remember, stay safe, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to show you how they can actually affect this style of studio image.